It is main event time with a big fight feel in the air and years of history between two men who have been on both sides of the fence, friend and foe. But uh, any positive vibes go out the window when the individualistic goal of the prestige championship is at stake. We've seen a more unpredictable and, dare I say, erratic mentality in recent months out of the challenger Simon Grimm. He has showcased his frustration. He has showcased his hostility toward many on and off camera. But Grimm, uh, at his root, at his base, is driven by competition, and there's nothing more he wants in this entire world than to prove he is the best in prestige wrestling and to prove that he is better than Tom Lawler. This rubber match could decide it. They are neck and neck heading in. And if Grimm is victorious on this outing, he will be prestige champion. Tough to read his demeanor, tough to read his body language. Focused, but perhaps a little relaxed. Is it a mind game? Is it accurate? Will it stay that way when the bell rings? Grimm has been very unpredictable as of late. Filthy Tom won the first meeting between these two men, and it was certainly a major part of what some would call a meteoric rise of the prestige ranking. Lawler is known the world over as a tough guy, as a badass, as a no-nonsense fighter, and a ultra-competitive individual. But you look at the matches with Lawler and Grimm, and one could say, inadvertently, they brought out the best of each other and helped each other move to a higher level. At one point, there was an allegiance based on respect. But wrestling so often as an individual goal, an individual outlook, only one man can sit atop that mountain. Right now it is Lawler in a matter of minutes that could change. And Tom is not shy about putting on display what's on the line. Grimm has great respect for that championship. The prestige championship has quickly become perhaps the most prestigious, to be a bit redundant, the most recognizable, the most highly sought after championship in this part of the country. There is a very short list of other titles you could compare it to, but for my money, Having had my eyes glued to much of these title matchups, you look at the competitive nature, you look at the grit, you look at the heart that is shown in all of these title matches, and that puts it, to me, a cut above the rest. We mentioned Lawler won the first meeting back in 2017. It was Grimm who took the return match a year ago. Grimm has been on a win streak as of late as both men grappled on the mat. Notice Lawler went for the grapevine of the leg. Grimm turns to a dominant position to counter. Went for the cross arm breaker. And Lawler immediately up to his knees to eliminate Grimm's leverage. And this is, this is pro wrestling at its base here. This is move and counter move. It is a game of leverage, a game of inches. And I don't know if we're going to get a lot of flash. I don't know if we're going to get a lot of sizzle with the stake in terms of high risk, in terms of visually impressive uh, aerial maneuvers. 
but I guarantee you, you get within arm's grasp of either of these men, that's as high risk as it gets, because one of these men could break an appendage on your body almost instantaneously if you give them the opportunity. Such an intense training regimen has to be undergone just to, to hang in the ring with a guy like Lawler, and certainly Grimm has uh, adapted that style as well, and certainly, as we mentioned, has, has been one up on Lawler at one point, or at least even the series. The Kimura type block by Lawler. Grimm tried to create some distance, but Lawler Almost like a piranha, just cinching in to his victim, not letting go, and potentially, metaphorically, if not literally, gonna eat his opponent alive here, look out. Grimm is trapped, the shoulder is crimped, and there's a Grimm counter with the shoulders trapped for one, then tried to stack up the weight of Lawler for one. Notice Grimm felt himself in trouble, immediately switched positions, went to cradle Lawler that time, Lawler back to his feet. And again, both these guys don't want to get trapped, they don't want to get caught in the other's grasp. Because there's no guarantee you're getting out. Grimm looking to fight free, or do his best to attempt as such, and Lawler creates enough distance where he's out of the reach of Grimm and those legs great find into a sharpshooter. Will Grimm tap out? Oh! Well, that's distasteful to say the least. Competitive flair and credit to our official for pressing on past that. Referee just doing his job and obviously Grimm upset at himself more than anything he was in that position. But now the single leg grapevine, Lawler kicks his way free. And now into a figure four. We have seen Lawler stick to his MMA roots, but break out many steps of the Pro Wrestling Playbook. Grimm countered the figure four by keeping Lawler from pressing the leg down, but Lawler does that time. Lawler's left leg is essentially applying enough pressure where Grimm's leg is breaking over his other leg. Seven points of the anatomy are affected. Grimm took the counter by picking the ankle and now over top of Lawler riding with a, a brief chin lock. And now a tight uh, grapevine into a Kimura. Now variation of the cross arm breaker. Notice the distance Grimm is trying to put between himself and Lawler to get the most out of that hold. Lawler to a vertical base. Half Boston Crab. Lawler showing that versatility. Expertise in all fighting styles. And check out this awkward torque of Grimm's body. Legs grapevine, core extended, arm and shoulder crimp, neck stretched. And with Grimm's only available appendage, the right leg, He's able to knee Lawler and barely escape, but you can feel, you can see, you can sense the respect from these fans as they watch on in awe at a pro wrestling and combat sports in general clinic. But you notice the temper of Grimm perhaps continue to rise. Grimm, I believe, threatening to break the fingers. Unless Lawler concedes, Lawler attempting to kick his way free with shots to the spine. Several times going higher now. But Grimm, death grip on that hand and eventually slams that hand and wrist on the ring canvas, which certainly uh, is no soft surface in its own right. And there are not many men on this earth, I would wager, that could go toe to toe in a striking game with Lawler. Grimm, I believe, is on that very short list. And Lawler staggering back in the corner. 
Left his feet for a moment, but a great recovery. The rear naked choke. And Grimm seeking solace in the ropes, forcing a break. If Lawler had leaned back, Grimm would have been in dire straits. We did not get that far. But now it's Lawler using the positioning of Grimm in the same ropes that saved Grimm. Now to Lawler's advantage. been an incredible chess game between these two athletes. We have seen both men on the, the brink of victory and on the verge of defeat. Suplex attempt. Grimm able to keep himself on that ring frame. Oh, look out here. Grimm looking to suplex Lawler on the floor. This could end the matchup immediately at Lawler. A very offensive, defensive move. Come up with a kick. And if I'm these ringside fans, I'm, I'm keeping my distance because these guys will, will go through anything and anyone that could get in their way. And Lawler suplexes Grimm back inside. And hangs on with it. That guillotine choke. Lawler is wrenching. And pulling. And Grimm may be fading. Well, the arm is not dropping on Grimm yet. Shots to potentially the kidneys. That'll do its damage for sure. And Grimm! A counter the only way he knows how. Again, using the ropes, this time spilling through. And again, this is uh, such an amazing demonstration of what the prestige championship means to everybody on this roster, particularly these two. Look out. Lawler dropped on the ring frame. The frame does not budge an inch. You can see Lawler's body absorbed all the impact and the face of Simon Grimm and the whirlwind of emotions he's felt thus far speaks volumes. Ouch. A very aggressive head, but no regard for his own well-being by Simon Grimm. You can hear the impact. You can feel the emotion in the air. As we talked about the hostility of Grimm in recent months. And nobody's safe. Nobody's safe. I, I, I can't wait to see what may happen if Grimm is successful in winning this championship, but man, I shudder to think what might happen if he doesn't. Well, the series of round kicks were succeeding for a time, and Lawler, with a ringside boost, gets the advantage again. Referee being very lenient here, which I respect him for. We want a decisive winner. And Lawler getting some hydration while he unloads on Grimm. Lawler breaks the count. It's another beverage for his troubles. The ring may have just been on the way to the drink. Look out. Well, Lawler psyching himself up. It's unconventional, but man, it's working. You look in Lawler's eyes, you see an unmatched focus. And Grimm is firing back. We're at eight again with this count. 
And that's what both men think of this count. It's not just the prestige championship. It is personal. It is completely just beyond intense at this point. And it, it, it's not going to be your traditional championship matchup. It's not uh, Briscoe and Funk Jr., but it's physical as hell. And everybody here is digging it, except for maybe Lala, who just got dropped spine first on this wooden floor. Pain etched all over the face of Lawler as that suplex could have been a game changer for Simon Grimm. Now Lawler sent back in. Grimm could be the new prestige champion. Lawler out at one. The time it took to get him back in the ring could have been the difference maker as Grimm goes back to cross arm breaker, but Lawler the counter by clasping his hands together, not letting Grimm get the full extension, but Grimm leans in with more of his body and separates those two arms and Lawler forced to go to the ropes. As personal and heated as this has gotten, neither man has forgotten their ground game amidst some very, very physical strikes. And with how Grimm is positioning Lawler, could be attempting the end. Lawler can sense that he's fighting as best he can, but still not out of the woods. Grimm is looking for a home run. Superplex! I'll tell you, Grimm may not have been as high up as, as, as some of your superplexes, but he made up for it an impact. He absolutely drove Lawler down into that canvas. He could have him. No. A near fall. The two counts get longer, but Lawler still finds a way out and kick out again. But notice Grimm had a hold of the arm before the kick out, could transfer right into the Kimura. There was no break of contact, nowhere Lawler could go. Lawler again clasping the hands together. Then he knocked Grimm off balance for a moment. Grimm adjusts. Back to the away. Lawler trapped Grimm's shoulders. And Grimm had to release the hold. We would have pinned himself. And you can see the sweat fly in these bright lights. If there's any doubt how physical this is. If there's any doubt how much these guys are bringing to the dance. They are leaving absolutely everything in this ring. A lot of the short jabs. There's nowhere for Grimm to go to escape. And Grimm goes limp all over the cover. Two count only. Lawler beginning to show some frustration. But again, this is the rubber match they have met twice before. Each knows how capable and dangerous the other can be. Lawler, the fireman's carry. Airplane spin. Lawler, a lifelong wrestling fan, going old school. And deposits Grimm in dangerous territory. Elevates with the knees straight to the exposed abdomen. Second time. All Grimm can do is deal with it at this point. Third shot, multiple revolutions leading in. 
Lawler built up as much momentum as he could with what's been taken out of him. Wasn't enough. Oh, poor ring positioning. And if we weren't so deep into this contest, if we weren't over the 15 minute mark, Lawler probably would have dragged Grimm to the center. But at this point, sometimes when that fatigue starts to set in, you don't always think of those details or you just try to end it as quickly as possible. Look at the sweat fly again. And Grimm is daring Lawler to give him his best. Grimm wants to shrug off Lawler's best and respond with one better. But easier said than done, look out. What a battle this is. Lawler the takedown. Tom Lawler is still on his feet. Tom Lawler is ascending the ropes. But way up high, but no one there at the elbow. A high risk late in the game, but it was telegraphed. Grim saw it coming. Both men are trash talking as they're trying to get to their feet. We've heard the chance before, fight forever. My God, this time it may be a reality. Both men attempt a knockout shot. Both men score big. Counting, he's at six. It'd be such a shame to see this end in a double count out. I think if that happened, Lawler and Grimm, man, they just keep fighting in the parking lot at this point. Who is the alpha male of prestige wrestling? And Grimm charges in. That right connected in a big way, but Lawler back up. German suplex. Grimm dumped on the back of his neck. Notice it's taking Lawler time to follow through. The knee caught Grimm. Grimm is dazed. A second time. Grimm elevated. He's lit, referee checking Lawler's shoulders. Lawler down, into the rear naked choke. Grim rolls out of harm's way, cross arm breaker. Lawler the counter again. Notice the arms clasped, the hands clasped. Lawler turns it around, back to the dominant position. Rear naked choke, body scissors sitched in. Can Grim get to a rope? Grim is maybe a couple of fingertips away. Lawler takes away one hand, but Grimm with the free arm reaches salvation at the last possible second. The fireman's carry counter, and Grimm caught Lawler in the back of the head. Lawler had no time to brace himself or try to counter package pile driver. Excuse me, the cradle pile driver. My God, this action's been so rapid fire. A second cradle pile driver. Graham, I don't think he thought he got all the first one. He got all the second. Or at least he thought. Lawler finds a way to press on. And at this point, maybe a moment of doubt 
or introspection what needs to be done to put the nail in this coffin. A third cradle pile driver. Lawler looking to counter. Grim hangs on. Roll up. And it's Lawler with a triangle choke. He's got it cinched in tight. And Grim is nowhere near a rope. Gr Grim is fading. Grim has gone limp. Is, is anything left? There is! Lawler, his shoulders were trapped for a moment. Grimm is trying to fight free, but Lawler won't break the grasp. Grimm taking over, mounted position, straight right hands, right to the top of the head, right to the skull, the elbows, the forearms. And Lawler, back into the triangle. Lawler may have, have practically Knock Grim out. Grim taps. Grim taps. Grim was practically there is unconscious. And still prestige wrestling champion, Filthy Tom Lawler. I think we were seconds away from a stoppage with Grim unable to defend himself after those hard uh, white forearms from the mounted position into that triangle choke once again. But Grimm, a man's man, realized that uh, he'd been bested, he conceded, and the rubber match goes just barely, just barely, but it goes to the defending champion, Filthy Tom Lawler. What a battle this has been. Lawler just sinking in the moment. Not just perhaps the toughest title defense of his career, maybe his toughest battle in any form, in any style. You see respect from Lawler towards Grimm who gave Lawler just a hell of a fight every single second of the way. There were numerous, numerous times that it seemed Grimm was a heartbeat away from being champion, a half second away from being champion. And Lawler wants to give Grimm his props man to man. Ladies and gentlemen, Prestige Wrestling returns to Portland September 29th. Get your tickets at prestigewrestling.net. I'm Joe Dombrowski. Thanks for watching.